Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Today, we're going to journey back in time and take a look at some tones with the Axe FX Ultra. This particular Axe FX Ultra was my very first fractal unit. It belonged to a buddy of mine who had bought it off another friend of mine. This unit originally belonged to my good friend, Troy Nabuban, who you guys know from quite a few videos on the channel. He's also a great guitar player, singer, producer, engineer. He records all the ragdoll stuff for us. And uh, I have no idea when he did this, but this was years and years ago now. He bought an Axe FX Ultra. I remember him bringing it around and kind of blew my mind that this little two rack unit could sound the way it did. Then I got it in 2016, subsequently did uh, a US tour, a European tour, and an Australian tour with Ragdoll for that to cop a lot of the tones on the Back to Zero album we had just done. So it more than earned its stripes. When I got an AX8, I gave this Ultra to my dad and he's been enjoying it, playing guitar on that for a couple of years. I recently gave him my AX8 and I got the Ultra back. So we're gonna try pull some tones with it. And it's like a trip down memory lane because this was uh, this was the first step down the rabbit hole. So let's start with a couple of basic amp and cab tones. At the moment, I've got good old Recto Red. This is the amp model I used to use for all my live presets. And I've paired it up with a user cab. I've actually converted uh, two cabs that if you watch a lot of my other Axe FX3 videos, you would know uh, one is a cab I made using a Marshall 4x12 with V30s and the other is a uh, Marshall Tall Vintage cab with greenbacks. So let's start with the V30 cab. It's number one in here and the Recto straight up stock settings with my PRS. <laughs> It's not too bad to start with. Uh, it's it's funny coming from the latest generation fractal stuff. Uh, it, it feels like there's some things missing like the cabinet high and low cuts, but we can get that. Let's just add a parametric EQ block. I mean, this is all very familiar. The parametric EQ looks almost identical to the way it does in the latest generation of products. So I've got uh, just a high and low cut at 80 and 8K. Now it sounds like this. <laughs> Sweet, this is kind of getting into the zone now. Let's uh, let's boost the front end. I always like to do that with a rectifier, whether in here or in the real world. Tube screamer in front, now we're cooking. This is right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty cool. These models from the Ultra and the Standard are actually in the latest generation of products. They're uh, in there as Thordendal for Frederick Thordendal from Meshuggah. Apparently he really loves these models. So uh, let's, let's add a delay because delay is good. And we've got a couple of different delay types. We have a mono delay, a stereo delay, ping pong, dual reverse, and the looper is part of the delay block in the Ultra. So let's just stay with this stereo delay. Uh, we'll set it up, you know, kind of what I normally do. Quarter note, set the ratio to 75%. The mix, I'll probably go a bit higher to 25. And uh, can we tweak the high and low cut in here? We can. Awesome. I'm going to set this to about 4K, right where I like it. I'm going to go for, uh, ooh, this is nice. We can get an 18 dB filter slope. This is pretty cool. <laughs> That's a tone. That is high gain heaven right there. Just some um, pretty simple setup as well. I didn't have to do a lot. 
This is cool. Let's try a different ant model. Um, I'll flick a couple of these blocks off for now, but I will leave that parametric EQ on there as my high and low cut. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of ant models that aren't in the latest generation products. Like you can see there's a Brit 900. Shall we hear the Brit 900? I'm curious. <laughs> That's not the worst thing I've ever heard. Let's uh, let's try hit it with a super overdrive. Does it, do we have the super OD? Is it in here? What do we got? Face fuzz. Uh, yes, we do. Very nice. <laughs> That sounds like a boosted Marshall to me. Uh, let's try this greenback cab that I bumped in here. And let's, I don't know, let's try a Plexi or something. So what's interesting is in all the latest versions of this, the non-master volume amps, the master defaults to 10. So let's put that at 10 because real world old school Plexis don't have master volumes, even though people buy them and then add master volumes to them. Uh, <laughs> and I would run the bass low. And I'd probably run it similar to this in the real world or on the Axe FX3. That's not too bad, but that's definitely one model or type of model that I definitely notice in um, even in like the AX8 and the Axe FX2 that uh, sounds a lot more authentic. This doesn't sound bad by any stretch of the imagination, but um, the uh, the newer firmware definitely has like more of that kind of plexi bark and thrack about it. What other boost could we put in front of this for some fun? Uh, this uh, this is really familiar, like. There's most of the most of the hits. We can put a treble booster in front of it. That could be fun. <laughs> getting nasty that's kind of fun uh putting a treble booster in front of a plexi just like you would in the real world um all right all right this is cool let's try something else there's a few other models um we have one that i remember being a really nice kind of clean app uh this one the uk gc30 it's based around a laney vc30 from memory uh let's just bring the master down let's see what it sounds like <laughs>
that can still kind of do some major breakup stuff as well. This is a pretty amazing little unit. The treble, sorry, not the treble, but the presence is probably a bit high. Notice that you can get negative presence on this as well. <laughs> It's actually kind of cool, low gain, uh, crunchy rock tone there as well. The other one that I like is the, uh, where is it? The Corn Cob R100. I think this is based around the Richie Kotzen signature head, the RK100. I'll bring the master down on this and just adjust the level. This is really cool. Uh, not negative 65, negative six. That's what we want. I think the big thing with this, uh, as with anything, is getting the cab impulse right. And I'm really used to the way uh, my cab sounds. So, you know, I'm pretty comfy with this. The amp modeling, the dynamics and everything is there. <laughs> That's really cool. Can we please have the RK100 back in the Axe FX3? I like that quite a lot. I uh, remember enjoying the Ubershal in here as well, but let's do this. Let's have a listen to some of the effects. So uh, I want to bring up a cleanish kind of amp. Uh, oh, we have the Shiva. That's cool. Does this sound clean? <laughs> Like that that's really nice maybe add a compressor do we have compressors we do uh, so you have a choice between a studio and a pedal compressor let's say a studio <laughs> That's pretty cool. So that is very, very squishy at the moment. And there's some classic effects. Let's hear the quad chorus because this is unique to this generation of fractal products. The quad chorus, there's some really cool stuff happening here. You can set the master rate, the master depth, the feedback if you want it, the input mode, uh, the high cut I'll bring down, say to about 8K. I was playing around with this earlier today and I really, really liked it. Then you have for each voice, you can have an LFO rate multiplier. You can set the times, the depths, and you can morph between three different LFOs, uh, which you can see over here. So this is like really, really cool. Let's hear it. <laughs> the pitch crystals effect in there. 
There's a lot of good stuff going on in the old Axe FX Ultra. If you guys want me to do a few more videos with this, maybe pull it out a few more times, let me know in the comments. My camera battery is about to die, so I'm going to say goodbye. You guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching.